Have you ever asked yourself, why do people take heroin? They take heroin because it makes them feel good or else they wouldn't take it, now would they? I used to love pop culture. I used to love pop culture and I would consume it by the bucketful. Oh yeah, movies and TV shows and uh, you know, pop tunes and what have you, all this crap, right? The only thing I didn't consume was video games because I didn't particularly care for them. And I actually did a stint of video games back in the early 80s, you know, the coin operated ones, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, and what have you. But, you know, other than video games, I did them all, yeah? <laughs> Just like back in the day, I did pretty much every drug, right? And now I despise pop culture. And it's not because I think that pop culture has gotten worse. No, no. It's not that pop culture has gotten worse. It, it, it's always been equally crappy. Okay, but I realize the truth about pop culture. Pop culture makes you feel good, but it's just like heroin. No good can come of it, and in the end, it'll kill you. See, a lot of people think that uh, pop culture is cancer, especially, you know, the, these, uh, these uh, snobby people, you know, the snobby people, you know, the, the, the cultural snobs who want to seem more sophisticated than us plebs, right? They, they go around talking about, I don't know, fucking James Joyce or whatever the fuck, right? And they talk about highfalutin art, you know, they don't watch the TV shows, but they, they say it, you know, very self-consciously, right? Instead, they go to like, I don't know, some exhibition of Mark Rothko paintings or some shit like that. But ultimately, it, it's the same thing. They are consuming cultural products, right? They are consuming cultural products, but the cultural product doesn't really enrich them. Just like pop culture doesn't enrich you because that's not its function. Pop culture is not supposed to enrich you. Pop culture is supposed to entertain you, which is vastly different. See, back in the day when I was a professional writer, you know, I wrote entertainments, right? And actually it's much harder to write entertainment than it is to create art or something that has uh, artistic worth. But that's for another conversation. The point I'm trying to make is that see, pop culture wants to entertain you but it's not gonna give you anything. It's not gonna give you any kind of intellectual or spiritual sustenance. Or let me rephrase that. There are sometimes pop cultural artifacts that do achieve this state of grace, of being both entertaining and being uh, artistically uh, meritorious. For instance, The Godfather Part Two, Rush's 2112, um, Ernest Hemingway's short stories. These cultural artifacts can entertain you and, and you know fascinate you and at the same time give you a great deal of emotional and spiritual sustenance. But see, those works of art that transcend their, their, their origin as entertainments and become art, they are vanishingly rare, vanishingly rare. For the most part, what does pop culture do? It kills the time you have in life. That's what it does. It eats away at the most precious resource you have, which is time. You consume the pop culture artifact. You, you watch the TV show, you watch the stupid MCU universe movie or whatever the fuck, right? And that time spent, that attention you give the pop culture artifact, it's time that is gone forever. And that'll begin to scare you more as you get older. I'm 51. And uh, the, the older I get, the more I realize that the time ahead of me is limited. You know, I mean, I've got basically another 20 years of being more or less functional. You know, I figure that once I'm past 70, I'm going to start to decay and become a doddering old fool. Sometimes I already think that I am a doddering old fool. But again, that's for another conversation. The point I'm trying to make is that, see, you get older and you realize how little time you have in life. You think that you have a lot, especially when you're young, when you're like in your teens or very early 20s, you look ahead of you and you see all of these decades, these endless oceans of time. And you think to yourself, oh, I, I can afford to watch uh, this TV show or this movie or whatever the hell, right? And it's not gonna be a good, bad, bad thing. You know, it's gonna entertain me. I'm gonna have a good time and all the rest of it. But as you get older, you realize how precious time is and you don't wanna waste it on trivia. You don't want to waste it or fritter it away. 
That's it. You don't want to fritter it away. And that's what pop culture does. Let me give you a specific example of something that happened to me. About, I don't know, uh, 2010, 2011, something like that. I, um, I never watched the TV show House, you know? I just never got around to it. And um, uh, for some reason, somebody had recommended it to me, whatever, and I was like, fine, you know, I'll, I'll watch the thing. So I downloaded the first episode of the first season. And, you know, after five minutes, I knew what the show was about. It's basically the adventures of Sherlock Holmes in a hospital with a very curmudgeonly um, drug-addicted doctor. Sherlock Holmes was a drug addict. He was, uh, he was uh, addicted to cocaine, right? And, you know, I, I thought that that's what the show is. Right, and um, I watched that first episode, and and it was amusing and entertaining, sure, but it was trivial. But here's the thing that happened to me: I wound up watching that first episode of that first season, and then the second episode, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, until I finished and watched the twentieth episode, the twenty-second episode, right? And then I downloaded the second season, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, and the eighth, and I watched them all. I watched them all and I threw away, I mean, literally threw away something like two weeks of my life. Two weeks of my life that I just devoted to the stupid TV show and frittered away two weeks of my life watching all of these episodes of this stupid television program instead of doing something that could have been worthwhile. Now, of course, what could have been worthwhile? Now, you say to me, uh, what, what could you have done to entertain yourself? Well, for instance, one of the things I'm doing now, I'm into wood woodworking, right? I'm crappy at it, you know? Uh, but I'm getting into it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's fun. It's a fun pastime. And the thing is, see, every time I do a little project in woodworking, I get a little bit better at it, okay? Every time I do whatever little handiwork I'm doing in the studio here, I learn a little technique. I, I improve a certain ability that I had before that was not so good, but you know, with practice it gets better, it gets perfect, right? Every time I do some woodworking project, I improve and I develop a skill. It might be a skill that I will never really use, but at least it's something in me, something that is growing. But after two weeks of watching House, what did I learn? What did I gain? Was there anything at all that improved in my life or in my person? Did this show add anything to my life? And the answer is quite obvious, no. <laughs> no, it did not. It was a complete waste of two weeks of my life. The first episode of the show was enough. It, it showed me what the show was. Every single episode after that was just basically a repetition of that first episode, which is of course the whole point of TV shows. The whole point of a TV show is to be repetitive. It's showing you the same thing over and over and over again, you know, but just gussied up in, in different language and different situations, but essentially the same story. It doesn't change. That's the point of television. And I spent, I threw away, I didn't spend, I threw away two weeks of my life on that fucking show. And of course I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as much as I would have enjoyed a shot of heroin. Yeah, because as you see, you take heroin, right? Well, I myself have never taken heroin, but from what I have read and what I have seen on movies and documentaries and what have you, you shoot heroin and it makes you feel really good. And because of it, well, what starts to happen? You start to do it again and again and again. And you start to disregard the important things in your life, your work, your family, your friends. You start to disregard them and focus on getting heroin for your next hit. And you keep on jabbing that needle into your vein and you know, losing your job, losing your family. And then you start losing your possessions as you sell them in order to get the money for more heroin. And you just consume heroin and it doesn't do anything for your life. On the contrary, it hollows out your life. Your life becomes empty, a hollow shell because of the heroin. And you keep on taking and keep on taking it until eventually you have nothing, right? You've not gained a single thing from the heroin, from this addiction. It made you feel good. You frittered away your time, the time that you have on this earth, on the heroin. It made you feel goddamn good. 
but it didn't give you anything. It just made you feel good for that moment. You know, when I do my woodworking shit, and of course it's hard a lot of times. A lot of times I fuck it up, you know? I measure all the wood and all the crap I'm gonna do, right? And, and make sure that it's all aligned and all the rest of it, and, and you know, cut it really carefully, and I put it all together, and you know, it's crooked, <laughs> right? It's crooked, and, and you know, it's like, oh, God damn it, right? It's frustrating. I don't feel good, yeah? On the contrary, I feel incredibly frustrated. I feel incredibly frustrated. I feel not angry per se, but you know, just annoyed, right? Wouldn't it be better to not be annoyed? Wouldn't it be better to me, for me to feel happy? You know, I, I watch an episode of House and I watch the episode and it's amusing and funny and you know, distracting and you know, it's, it's good for me. Wouldn't watching an episode of House be better than doing my little wooden doodads, huh? No, no, of course not. Of course not, because you see, life is about contrast, see? Life is about contrast, about feeling good sometimes and feeling like shit other times. It's the difference between that. That's how you get a valuable life. If you're only feeling good all the time, if you're only feeling happy, if, if you're only taking heroin 24 seven and feeling high as a kite all day long, that is a miserable fucking life. Because there's no question that, you know, you get high on some drug, right? Or you have a success in, in the stupid woodworking shit and you feel terrific, yeah. But see, it's the negative side, that contrast between the two, that creates a life and creates a, a, a great life, especially that sense of like, I did something not very well and I improved on it until I got it perfect, like I wanted it to. That gives you tremendous satisfaction. And the problem with pop culture, pop culture that we are being, that, that is being thrown our way by everything around us practically. And I'm not just talking about movies and video games and music and shit like that, but also YouTube. I mean, the, the, the very thing that we're on here, this platform, right? It's designed to entertain you, to fritter away your time and not use it productively not use the limited time you have to do something worthwhile. Now, what is worthwhile? Hmm, that's a great question. I and mean, great philosophers, better men than you and me will ever be, have been confounded by that question. Uh, and nobody has a clear definition of, of, of what that would be, but we can sort of like discern, we can sort of like intuit what's, some, what's worthwhile what's worth doing, what's worth spending our time doing. I look back on the time when I was a teenager, right? I listened to all these fucking bands and they were most, the vast majority of these bands were fucking awful, right? They were horrible bands. And I memorized the lyrics to these crap bands, these crap pop bands that were manufactured by some, uh, by some record label somewhere, right? Some bowels of hell and brought them up and inflicted it on all of us, right? Anyway. I spent hours and hours and hours listening to this crap music and, and listening to the lyrics of these crap songs instead of, say, learning about engines, which I wish I'd learned when I was a kid, right? Learning, really learning about engines. Or for instance, learning a new language. I discovered, much to my chagrin, when I was living in Paris in 2011, 2012, that uh, you know, I, I was too old to learn a new language, yeah? And, and I see my little kids, you know, they're already speaking three languages, Russian, Ukrainian, and English, right? And rather well, all three. And yeah, because, you know, young minds are plastic and malleable and they can absorb a new language. I mean, even into their teens. And I wish I'd spent my time learning a language as opposed to frittering away and throwing it away on fucking pop culture. Yeah, but, and that's just one example. Don't get me started on fucking video games. Oh yeah, video games, you know, a lot of people try to say that video games are an art, right? And uh, well, there, there was some, uh, recently, some big convention about Fortnite. I don't even know what the fuck Fortnite is, right? Thousands of people attended to watch other people play some fucking video game, right? I, how pathetic. It was pathetic. And all those people who watched the, the, the other people playing the video games, at least the ones who were playing the video games, well, they were like the participants, but to watch it, to watch 
video game players or to watch, by the same token, to watch Major League or basketball or football or whatever the hell, right? To watch something, to throw away your time while somebody else is doing an activity that is actually beneficial. I mean, I personally think that playing video games, there's no upside to it. What? You have better hand-eye coordination? Uh, big fucking deal, right? At least when somebody's playing football, uh, American football or association soccer, uh, uh, association football, rather, or baseball or basketball, at least they're getting the fucking exercise, right? And when they're doing it. But to just watch, to watch, that's like shooting heroin. Because you're frittering away your time. Ask yourself, what is the pop cultural artifact that you most enjoy, quote unquote, that you spend the most time, you know, uh, uh, partaking in, right? What's your drug of choice insofar as pop culture? Ask yourself. Ask yourself, how many hours did you spend on it? How many hours did you spend listening or consuming these pop cultural artifacts? Ask yourself. How much have you gotten out of it in terms of knowledge about the world? Don't confuse knowledge about the fucking pop cultural artifact with knowledge about the world, insights about the world. Hmm? Don't confuse the two because they are not the same. Knowing everything about fucking Star Trek or whatever the fuck does not mean that you know jack shit about life. It just means that you know every fucking bit of trivia about a fucking TV show, okay? So ask yourself. How much have you learned about the world? What did you gain in terms of some skill? Did you gain a skill? Did you gain an ability? Huh? I know the answer, and the answer is no. You didn't gain any fucking skill. Okay? You threw away your time. And ask yourself the following thing. What ability would you really have liked to have had that you didn't pursue because you threw away your time with that pop cultural artifact. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me, was it a language you would have liked to have learned or how to play an instrument, the guitar or the piano or the drums? Would you have preferred to travel, say, and instead of spending all this money on video games or some fucking collectible cards or some shit like that, could you have you know, used that money, saved all that money, and instead of buying these pop cultural artifacts, use that money for a budget ticket to Asia, to Japan, say, or some other country that you've never been to but always wanted to go to. Huh? Ask yourself this. Ask yourself how much of your life you threw away to indulge in this addiction to pop culture. Nowadays, I don't know shit about pop culture. I mean, I, some things I sort of like catch on because they're in the zeitgeist for whatever reason, right? But in general, I don't follow any TV show. I don't follow any kind of movie franchise. I, I know about the Avengers shit, but I don't know what the fuck is going on that piece of shit. And the episodes I have seen of that piece of shit uh, movie universe, are, yeah, they, they're garbage because all of it is garbage. Ugh, I'm just ranting at this point. Fuck. I'm ranting for a reason. Because you see, when, when you see somebody who's rich, yeah, say they won the lottery. They won the lottery and they start throwing their money away, you know, giving a million bucks here and a million bucks there to random strangers, right? Or worse yet, they allow themselves to be fooled by shysters who steal their money and take away their, their cash. And, you know, like Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson, yeah, the baddest man on the planet back in the day, yeah. And he won every fight against everybody, and he made hundreds of millions of dollars, and he lost it all. He lost it all because unscrupulous people took away his money, cheated him out of it. And he also foolishly just lavished people, strangers, with all kinds of cars and money and this and that and the other, so that people would like him, right? And you know, at the time, I mean, I remember because Mike Tyson is my age, and I remember when he was like, 20 and he won and I was 20 and he won the the heavyweight title of the world and even then I could tell I mean I was a kid and I could tell that he was being taken advantage of and he was losing all of his money he was going to wind up broken that's exactly what happened and you know I remember seeing that and thinking to myself that's a fucking tragedy poor bastard he's losing everything he worked so hard to get he's being cheated out of it or he's throwing it away randomly foolishly and that's how I feel about young people who throw away all of their time on pop culture bullshit.
they have time, which is so fucking valuable. And you are throwing it away and getting nothing for it. Yeah, you really are getting nothing for it. Mm? You're getting absolutely nothing. What, you're not getting any kind of, uh, uh, you know, friends out of this shit. You might meet some people who also like your, your foolish pop culture artifact, your, your TV show or whatever the fuck, but they're not going to be your friends. It's the same thing as like, uh, you know, junkies that get together. They're not friends. They just share an addiction to heroin. Yeah. They're, they're not friends. They have nothing in common aside from their addiction. And it's an addiction that is robbing them of life. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I find it so frustrating because you see, you ask any older guy or a woman for that matter, you know, anybody over the age of 50, uh, and, and they will tell you that the thing that freaks them out is how little time ahead of them they have left. And that's what freaks them out because they want to see things and experience things. And they look back on the time that they have spent and they are so miserable about the fact that they, that they threw so much of their time away on foolishness, like fucking pop culture. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending that time to learn things that are valuable or spending time with people, the people that they love, spending that time not glued to some TV show that doesn't give you anything, but rather, you know, glued to some person that you love and talking about the things that are important to them and sharing with them the things that are important to you. That's what all older people regret, myself included, of how much I, I threw time away on, on idiocy, you know, just foolishness. And I'm, I, I feel the regret that a former heroin addict would have. The regret of knowing that I just had this golden opportunity and I just blew it. Learn from my example. Learn from the example of other people. You're a young guy, you're in your teens or early 20s, maybe early 30s. Go up to somebody who's over 50. Ask them what they really regret. What they really regret doing with their time. Ask them if they threw away their time on pointless shit that they later regret deeply. Ask them the things that they didn't learn or didn't achieve or didn't accomplish, which they could have accomplished and achieved and done if only they ignored pop culture bullshit and, and focused on those things that really matter. Ask them. Do that for me. Do that for me and then get back to me. And uh, yeah, tell me what they said.